So, uh, Professor, maybe we should check and see if your presenters are in the room. Okay, let me check the Tao Tao. Yeah, Tao Tao is here. Check his microphone, perhaps. Yeah, Tao Tao, unmute. Unmute. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the, 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 we will run the video directory or just uh, have the presenter? The student host will do that. She has downloaded them uh, locally to her computer, so she'll run that. Okay. And then the second paper, Ruida Yang, are they present? Ruida Yang. Hello. Sin. Can you hear me? Uh, Tao Tao? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? The second paper is the... Zen Lin, he, he is there. He just said that was him who... Zen Lin is the, the author, I guess, co-author that's... Uh, oh, yeah, I saw that. that. Okay, yeah, Lin will be the... Lin Xin at the... Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. And then the third author... Yong He. Yong yeah, uh, Yong Ki, yeah. yeah. Yong Ki. I'm here. Yeah, Sang Yong Ki. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then the fourth author, Yi Xin Wang. Yi Xin Wang. Any any participant for the third, for the paper five a night? No, okay. Maybe the fifth paper. Jia Xin, Jiang. Oh yes, I'm here. Okay, very good. Thank you. So I think uh, for uh, Dong, I think we 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 can start. Okay, so maybe first introduce, uh, so welcome to the, to our uh, ICD session eight, research session on the graph and the social networks, the second one, and then we will have the one hour, 30 minutes. So each presentation will have around uh, 15 minutes, and then we will have the two or three minutes for question. So you can, you can pause your question in the uh, with, with Zoom, or you can put it on the on the Slack. So once the presentation is done, then I will I will uh, have the your question be be asked. Okay. So our first paper is the the Tao 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 from the Deakin University and the joint work with the University of West Australia and the Swinburne University of Technology. Of Australia. Hi everyone, I'm Tao Tao. I will present our work on anchored vortex exploration for community engagement. This is our outline of our presentation. It contains motivation, preliminaries, problem definition. After that, we propose our solutions, which followed by experiments and conclusion. As you can see from the above image, Social engagement is not just a single interaction with one of your customers. It's a long-term relationship. As Sunday Head shows, you are creating an open line of communication over a period of time. While the term customer relationship may come to mind, engagement is different and on its own way. When one customer decides to engage with your business on social media, they essentially put trust in your brand to solve their problems. The existing study on social community engagements mainly considers structured host panel detection, anchored kickoff problem, and uh, community discovery. However, none of them focus on local community engagements. For example, how to consider the attributed community or how to extend the community. Now, I will discuss our problem on local community engagements. 
which targets to find a set of vortex that can maximize the community. We define it as the anchored vortex exploration problem or AVE problem. For example, in this figure, they have three communities, CA1, CA2, and CA3. If we set U1, U9, U10 as the anchored vortex, it will induce a maximum community, which is covered by the color of yellow. Before discussing our solution on anchored vortex exploration problem, we first introduce some definitions related to social communities. The key core is the maximum subgraph where each vortex has at least k neighbors. And the largest k value of vortex is called the core number of this vortex. For example, the for example, the two core is the subgraph covered by the light blue color, like this one. Each vortex in two core has at least two labels. For example, U1 has two labels, U10 has four labels, U11 has three labels. All of these vortex have at least two labels. And for U14, they both exist in two core and three core. So the core number of U14 is equal to three. So this is the definition of k core and core number. We then introduce the anchor and anchor the k core. An anchor the k core is one type of k core which contains some special vortices. These special vortices are called anchors. While an anchor is always stay in the k core, now we define the furrows of an anchor vortex. A node v is a furrow of an anchor u if v is not in k core but belongs to anchor the k core by anchoring u. So in this finger, if we set U1 as the anchor as the anchor vortex, then U40 will be the furrow of U1 to join in the four core. And U40 in the previous, they belong to three core. An attributed community is a subgraph satisfying three conditions, such as the connectivity. Each vortex in an attributed community can connect with each other, with other vortex. They can call cohesiveness. Um, and the structure cohesiveness. Each vortex in the attributed community has a keyword contain, containing a keyword set W. And each vortex in the attributed community must have a degree no less than K. For example, the CA3 is the uh, attributed community because CA3 is connected, and all the vortex in CA3 contains the keyword music. And each vortex in CA3 has at least four neighbors. So CA3, CA3 is the attributed community. Similarly, the anchored attributed community is the type of attributed community that contains a set of anchored vortices. Now, our AVE problem aims to find a set of anchored vortices, which can induce a maximum anchored attributed community. In this figure, the best anchored vortex set is U1, U9, U10, because U1, U9, U10 can induce a maximum anchored attributed community, which is covered by the yellow color. So this is our problem definition. Um, to solve the AVE problem, we develop a field verify algorithm. The key idea of algorithm is to is easy. We want to field the unnecessary candidate anchored vortex set first, and then find out the best anchored vortices set from the remaining candidate anchored vortices. Now, the question is how to field the unnecessary candidate anchored vortices. To answer this question, we propose two properties. In property one, we show that the candidate anchored vortex of the attributed community must be the direct label or the linked label and its label of an attributed community. So only the vortex satisfied with these two conditions can be the candidate anchored vortex of an attributed community. For the property two, Give a subgraph the if a vortex is the follows or any other vortex in this subgraph, then 
this vortex cannot be the candidate anchored vortex set. So this is the theorem two. And the definition of property one and property two can be found in our paper. Based on these two properties, we can filter the majority of the candidate, unnecessary candidate anchored vortex selection. And after we filter the, filter the unnecessary candidate anchored vortex selection, we can find the best anchored vortex set from the remaining anchored vortex candidates. So this is our first solution. Although our previous solution can field the majority of candidates, uh, unnecessary candidate anchored vortex. However, it still remains a considerable candidate anchored vortex, vortex. To find out the best anchored vortex set, we need to compute the anchored attributed community size related to this anchored vortex set. However, this is very time consuming. Now, the question is, give a candidate anchored vortex set, can we identify the range of the induced anchored attributed community size without the forest computation? In the following, I will introduce how to identify the low bound and the up bound of the attributed community size without the forest computation. For this task, we first design one index called keyword avail anchored and forest index or KEF index. The KEF index is built using two components, FX and RFX. FX records the change of core numbers for all anchored vertex, and RF is an inverted list of FX. For example, when we anchor U1, the core number of U14 will increase from 3 to, one, uh, to 4, and the core number of U7, U8, U9, U10 will increase from 2 to 3. That means if k is equal to 3, once we anchor the u1, u, u7, u8, u9, u10 will be the follow of u1. If k is equal to 4, once we anchor the u1, the follows of u1 will be the u14. So this is the, this is the meaning of the kf index. Based on the kf index, we then define the property 3 which identify the low bound of the anchored set's forest size. Because from the KF, we can identify the forest of an anchored vortex. So we, based on this information, we can identify the low bound of the anchored set's forest size. <coughs> also, based on property three, we further identify the low bound of expanded anchored attributed community size, which is described in level two. We further discuss the process of identifying the potential flaws that can be skipped by applying about property three. For example, in several one, the U1, the vortex U1 to U5 is a flaws of the anchored vortex set A and B, but it's not a flaw of either A or B individually. That means this information do not record in the KF index. Also, in theorem 2, if we set A and B as anchored vortex, then the columbo of U1 will increase from 1 to 3. This situation also not record in the KF index. From theorem 1 and theorem 2, we can see that for each candidate anchored vortex set, there may exist some potential flaws which are not contained in previous KF index. Therefore, we need to probe all the potential follows for giving anchored vortex sets. We propose property file to both consider the above two situations and then design an algorithm to compute the potential follow sets. The proof of this, uh, the proof of property file can be found in our paper. Based on the potential for all set, we finally identified the up bound and up bound of the anchored sets for all size and the up bound of the expanded community size. Based on once we identified the up bound and low bound, we further designed a proving based optimization algorithm 
to act to solve our problem. So this is the solution part. In experiment part, we verified the effect, efficiency and effectiveness of our algorithm, our, our, our proposed methods by using five data sets. First, we consider effectiveness verification. We, we propose a um, metric named the engagement ratio to reflect the willingness of followers to join in a specific community. From the figure eight and figure nine, we can find that the forest in the attributed K-Core community performs better engagement than the forest in K-Core, and the, and the forest in the top largest community held better engagement than, is, than in the others. This is because the structure cohesiveness and the keyword cohesiveness has a positive correlation with engagement ratio, and the structure cohesiveness plays a more crucial role. We also propose another metric named cohesiveness to depict the graph structure along with graph evolution. From the figure 10, we can find that the anchored attributed community is less cohesive than the anchored K-core because the members in the attributed community have had a relationship than the members in K-core. Uh, we, we perform a series of experiments to validate the efficiency of our proposed algorithms. Uh, in our algorithms, we we perform uh, we we evaluate the running time while vary the value of k, the number of selected vertices, the keyword set uh, the keyword set size and the scalability of the data size. From all these experiment results, I show the efficiency of our proposed algorithms and uh, the FV. A, uh, uh, of our algorithms. We further perform a case study using the DBFP dataset. In figure 11, shows that when k equal to 4 and the keyword set is date, my pattern dates, the research we want along is anchored, the follow John Yang will be added into the attributed community. And then in, in figure 12, K is set to four, and the keyword set is date my database. We can say that when our in zone is set to the anchored node, the attributed community size expanded from the previous 44 to the 47 when while we want and the balance join in the community as a follower of our in zone. In finger in finger 12, we present the comparison of OLAC and our AVE method in terms of the attributed community size expansion. As we can see from the figure 11, the community size in AVE is, is larger than the OLAC. And with the, with the increase of the keyword set size, the average attributed community size will, incre will decrease. So this is our solution. Now this is our experiment solution. Now I'm summarize our talk by talk. We summarize the anchored vortex exploration program and proof is MP hub. And we devised several algorithms to solve this problem. And we finally conducted extensive experiments to verify, verify the effectiveness and the efficiency of our methods. Okay, that's all. Thanks, thank you for your listening. Any questions? Any question from the audience? Okay, so I, one, one question does the, in your graph, you always, the, the graph is undirected. So if you go to directed graph, can you also do this, the, the anchor text uh, identification? Good. Okay, so we cannot hear you clearly. Top. Maybe uh, that uh, another question from the uh, Mao Li. So that's the you use K core as the structural cohesive definition in your in your community. 
So is it possible to use other community definition, for example, the K trusty or K click? Uh, okay, thanks. Can you, can, you close to the, uh, Tata, can you close to the mic so we can hear you clearly? Uh, okay, sorry. Thank you. So can you hear me now? Yes, yes, better. Uh, okay, uh, thanks for your question, Modi. Uh, actually, it's a good question. Um, for the main reason why I use the KCO, because KCO is widely used as the community definition. This is the first reason. The second reason is because the previous user engagement usually use the KCO as the community de definition. Also, I think if uh, also we I think for the K trust is also a uh, uh, widely used community definition. I think in in our question, in our anchor KCO study, we we can also use the K trust as the community de definition is okay. But, K, but the K technique is maybe is not very good because the the time com complexity to compute the K core and the K trust is higher than the K core computation. But and the K the the time complexity of the K core is the most higher. So I think maybe in our problem or for the user engagement study, K trust is also can be used as the community definition. But the key code maybe is not very, very good. This is my answer. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tata. Okay. So that uh, we need to proceed to the next paper. So next paper is the on Nazi graph optimizing the Nazi graph through the voting-based uh, user feedbacks. So the also is uh, from the uh, uh, from the East China Normal University and the Hong Kong Baptist uh, University. I would like to introduce our work optimizing knowledge graphs through voting based user feedback. And I will share our work in this order. As we all know, knowledge graphs has been used in a wide range of applications to support search, recommendation, question answering, and uh, procedure medicine. But existing systems may suffer from two major limitations. First, the knowledge graphs constructed based on source data may contain errors. Second, the knowledge graph may become out of date and cannot quickly adapt to new knowledge. To address these issues, we propose to refine and optimize the knowledge graphs. Specifically, the optimization of the knowledge graph is to assign the correct weights to the edges of the graph, so that the graph can maximize task-specific evaluation scores. This score can be formulated as follows. We have a graph composed of nodes and weighted edges representing the relationship between the nodes and the weight represents the confidence of the relationship. We design a task-specific function to evaluate the graph, and the optimization task is to find an optimal weight assignment to maximize the evaluation function. Here is the related work on data cleaning, graph similarity measurement, and question answering systems. Knowledge graphs can be applied to many tasks. This paper takes the question answering system as an example to explain the process of our proposed model. Secondly, our model constructs the user's queries into problem nodes and links them with the graph. Relevant answers were then retrieved through the graph and ranked by the similarity score for each query. Thirdly, the user's vote to select the best answers in the rank list. And finally, the model adjusts the age weights of the graph so that the best answers voted by users can be re-ranked as high as possible. Based on the example we just saw, we can define the problem as follows. The model receives a request queue, retrieves and returns the list of the ranked answers from the candidate answer set. The user was the best answer, and the model adjusts the age weights of the knowledge graph according to the feedback and generates the optimized graph. To solve this problem, first we introduce our single word solution. The page rank algorithm can be used to evaluate the similarity between the question node and the answer nodes on the graph. 
but it requires multiple scans of the graph, which would incur prohibitively high time complexity. And it calculates the similarity scores between Aquarian node and all other nodes, which is not necessary for our question answering system. We propose an extended inverse p-distance algorithm, which results are equivalent to the personal page rank vector scores. It takes over all paths starting at the query node and ending at the answer node. So we could only consider a limited number of nodes, and the weight of edges could be trainable parameters. After determining the similarity variation, we can design an optimization problem to guide the weight adjustment of the graph. The initial weight of the graph implies the prior knowledge of the graph. So we construct it and the adjusted weight into a regular term to avoid, avoid fitting the user votes. The objective function is set to minimize the change of edge weights, which is measured by the equation distance of edge weights between the initial variable set and the optimized variable set. Here we use real valued variable xij to represent the edge weight from node vi to node vj. A negative user vote means that the user's best answer is not at the top of the list written by the model. Intuitively, we can introduce a constraint that makes the voted answer the most similarity to the query than other answers. Now, our weighted graph optimization problem is modeled as a signal geometric programming problem. We do not consider positive votes since in this case, the best answer has been ranked first in the rank list and there is no need to optimize the knowledge graph. Now we can go through the process of the single vote solution. First, we initialize the graph weight and for each negative vote, an independent optimization is performed. In each optimization, the graph weight is first assigned to the variable set one by one, and then the constraint function and the object function are constructed. Finally, the SGP problem is solved by the thrower and the variable value is reassigned to the graph. Even those errors may occur in some user worlds. Unfortunately, the single world solution constructs the SGP problem and adjusts the edge weights for each negative world individually. Due to the order of processing, the edge weights in the graph will be balanced towards the last programming result, which may reduce the overall quality of graph optimization. To adjust this drawback, we propose a multi-vote solution that processes all negative and positive votes in one batch. In the single vote solution, we only consider the negative votes, but if all the votes are put into a batch, the positive votes can cooperate with negative votes, so that the model can find a weight assignment that not only rectifies ranks in the negative votes, but also keeps the best answers in the positive votes. In the multi-vote solution, we need to deal with the conflicts. First, errors exist in some user votes, so that it is unable to adjust the edge weights to satisfy these votes, so we consider to find and free out them. Second, there could be conflicts among the user votes and those constraints cannot be met simultaneously. The problem becomes unsolvable, so we try to solve the SGP problem and satisfy as many votes as possible. As for how to quickly find votes that cannot be satisfied, we can have a basis that if the best answer in a vote cannot be satisfied under optimal conditions, it's an error vote and it should be discussed. For each vote, we set the edge weights of the path from the query node to the answer in this vote to 1 and set it to 0 if the edge only appears in other paths. If inequality constraints still cannot hold, we will discard this vote. For the second reason, we try to satisfy as many worlds as possible. So we introduce deviation variables for each inequality constraint of the original SGP problem. The model can satisfy all the constraints by adjusting the deviation variables. A positive deviation variable means the vote is unsatisfied. To minimize the number of unsatisfied votes, we add a penalty term to object function. In this way, the SGP problem can be solved even if a few votes cannot be simultaneously satisfied. The SGP problem is an NP-hard problem. We devise a split and merge strategy which is a heuristic algorithm to avoid the exponential increase in server time 
for large-scale SGP problems. The main idea is to break the large problem into a set of small sub-problems, since it's faster to solve small problems. Furthermore, small problems can be solved in parallel by embracing distributed technologies. Intuitively, the worlds with more common edges should be classified into the same cluster. So we use a function e to represent the edge set, which is associated with a vote. And the similarity between two votes is defined by the proportion of common edges. We further employ an affinity propagation clustering algorithm to classify the votes based on similarity. For each cluster, we construct an SGP problem and use the multi vote solution to solve them separately. After solving the SGP problems constructed for each cluster, an edge may receive weight changes from multiple clusters. We consider the merging these changes and obtain the final weights, then reassign them to the knowledge graph. Specifically, for each edge, we first generate a sign by weighted summary the weight changes from all the clusters. To adjust the weight efficiently, we do not directly use the result of the weighted summation. If the sign is positive, we use the maximal weight change as the final weight change and vice versa. By applying all the weight changes to the original weights, the model optimization is completed. Now in our experiments, we study the effectiveness of our framework for a knowledge graph that is built based on the question-answer paths crawled from the Taobao customer service website. We then evaluated the efficiency of our proposed solutions with several real-life graphs under the control settings. We end with a study on the impacts of the path length and the other parameter settings. We compared several methods and the different settings of our method. The IR approach evaluates the entities in the questions and the documents and return top K answers based on their coincidence rates. The algorithm proposed in Chapter 17 adopts a random work to evaluate the similarity between two nodes. We use the average of the rank changes, hit K, mean reciprocal rank, and mean average precision to measure the effectiveness of graph optimization. Then we use the average elapsed time to study the efficiency of our model. We denote the average ranking of the best answers and the average percentage-wise improvement of the rankings as RAVG and PAVG. The average of the rank changes clearly shows that the multiple solution is capable of improving the ranking of the best answers. On the other hand, the single world solution does not perform well. It's because the single world solution optimizes the graph merely based on the negative votes and it cannot handle the complex amount of votes. And in hit K accuracy, the multi world solution performs the best in all cases tested. Due to the reason mentioned before, the results in top 1 and top 3 degrees after optimization by using the single world solution, but it can still upgrade the result under rules of evaluation conditions. We also use mean reciprocal rank and mean average precision to evaluate our model. It shows the same trend. We further experimented only on the queries with negative votes. It suggests that the single vote solution does help for promoting the non-top-1 answers. Its poor performance for the whole test dataset is mainly because it does not consider the positive votes, which cannot prevent the top-1 answers from degrading after the graph optimization. In this experiment, we compare the elapsed time of the basic multi-vote solution and the multi-vote solution with the split and merge strategy by varying the number of votes. Moreover, we investigate the omega average of different solutions to study the impact of the split and merge strategy on graph optimization. The single vote solution is also included for comparison. When executing the basic multiple solution, the memory requirement exceeds the capacity of our server, so we limited the number of votes. In the figures from A to C, the elapsed time of the basic multiple solution increases significantly as the number of votes grows. The slower need more time to find the optimal solution that satisfies a large number of constraints. But in the split and merge strategy, it can achieve performance close to the single world solution, 
And if we use a distributed strategy to process each cluster in parallel, the elapsed time will be further reduced. In the figures from D to F, it shows that the scores of split and merge strategy are close to or even exist that of the basic solution. This implies that our optimization strategy can save a lot of computation time without sacrificing much on the effectiveness of graph optimization. To speed up the similarity computation, we pollute the paths with a length larger than L. We use a PD function to calculate the proportion of similarity scores increment between the query and the top K answers with a larger L. We also compare the elapsed time of different settings of L. It shows that when L is 506, the accuracy of similarity calculation is little improved, but the time consumed is greatly increased. We now compare the extended inverse p-distance efficiency against the existing random work method by varying the number of answers. It shows that our algorithm is more efficient and scalable than the random work algorithm. In particular, the gap increases with the size of the answer set. This is because the time cost of the random work algorithm is linear with the number of answers. Well, as the extended inverse p-distance can pursue many low-ranked answers by pass pursuing and significantly reduce the cost. In conclusion, in this paper, we propose an interactive framework to optimize the edge weights in a knowledge graph through the voting-based user feedback. And we propose a new notion called extended inverse p-distance to evaluate the similarity between a query node and answer nodes. We also developed a basic single world solution and a more advanced multi world solution for graph optimization, and propose a split and merge strategy to speed up the process of graph optimization for large datasets. The experiment results valid the effectiveness and efficiency of our proposed framework and optimization technologies. These are the references of this slide. Thanks for watching. Okay, yeah, thanks to Professor Lin. So there are the two questions. So first one is the, uh, how is the, the corpus of the question and the answers connect to the graph? And the second one, can you answer that the, uh, any the clustering algorithm did you use? Uh, did you use any the, of the shared clustering algorithm and uh, adapt it to, to this application? Uh, hello. Yeah, can you close to the mic? Uh, hello. Yeah, Can yeah. you hear me clearly? Yeah, it's much better. Thank you. Uh, for the f uh, for the first question, uh, <coughs> in your in your code, if an entity in knowledge graph appears in a query sentence or a uh, <coughs> or an answer document, we connect the query or answer node with it. Uh, the weight between the addition node and the entity node is defined by the occurrence frequency and we normalize weights into prob uh, probabilities. <coughs> and for and for next question, uh, we use affinity propagation clustering uh, and we haven't tested other algorithms. Uh, that's all. Okay, yeah, thank you, Professor Lin. Okay, so we'll go to the uh, next paper. The next paper is the uh, auto SF, the searching the scoring function for Nadi graph embedding and the author is the, from the Hong Kong University of Science Technology and the for, for, for Paradigm the, uh, in, in cooperation and presented by Yong Ki Zhang. Hello everyone. Glad to present our work, AutoSF searching scoring functions for knowledge graph embedding in the SAD 2020 conference here. I'm Yong Chi Zhang, a PhD from HKUSD and now a researcher at Fall Paradigm Corporation. This is a joint work with Dr. Chen Ming Yao, Dr. Wen Yuan Dai from Fall Paradigm Corporation, and uh, Professor Lei Chen, my supervisor from HKUST. This is outline for today's presentation. First, I will give an introduction to knowledge graph embedding and automating machine learning. Then I will introduce our proposed method, AutoSF, and then experiment and the summary. Knowledge graph is a special kind of graph that each node represents an entity and each edge is a direct relation. 
in knowledge graph, the basic unit is the fact of triplets with the head entity relation and tail entity. There are some typical cases in academic and the industry like Fortnite's free base DBPeter, Yago, etc. And the cases have been used in many applications like structure search, question answering, and recommendation, etc. Knowledge graph embedding aims to encode entities and relations in the knowledge graph into low dimensional vector spaces where capturing the nodes and edges connection properties. The advantage of using embedding is that it can be easily injected into downstream machine learning tasks and provide efficient similarity search and also discover some latent properties in missing links. Here is the general framework of learning knowledge graph embedding. Given a KG, we design a more, some model to measure the probability of triplets along with the parameters W. And we iteratively optimized the op parameters to improve performance on some tasks. In general, we maximize score on a set of positive or observed triplets in the knowledge graph and minimize score on a set of unobserved triplets. The triplets with higher score is more likely to be positive. And based on this principle, we can use it to predict missing links in the KG. Then let's see what is automated machine learning. Given a data set in general deep learning practice, the experts choose architectures or hyperparameters and the models are trained end to end to give feedback for the experts to pick up better architectures or hyperparameters. So in automated machine learning, experts design some patterns and let the model to train in a meta view. In this way, the model automatically pick up better architectures or hyperparameter settings in a black box learning view. There are two important perspectives. The search space, it means what to be searched, like the hyperparameters and neural ac network architectures. Then the search algorithm, it determines how to search efficiently. Like we can use reinforced learning, basic optimization, evolution algorithm, etc., to improve the search efficiency. Then let's say our proposed auto uh, method, AutoSF. In last decade, a large amount of scoring functions are designed to measure probability of triplets. There are so, the so many scoring functions are designed to encode entities and relations in some space, space to measure the probability and to capture some important properties in cages like the symmetric, anti-symmetric, inverse, or asymmetric. In general, the scoring functions can be classified into three types. First, the translational distance models, like trans-E, trans-H, and rotate E. They interpret relation as the translation from head entity to tail entity and use distance to measure the similarity. But these models are shown to be less depressive the neural network models use neural networks like MLP, convolution network, or recurrent network to mirror the probability, but they are too complex and difficult to train. For binary models, they use a binary function to mirror probability, like the dist mode, complex, analog, and simple E. These models achieve state of art performance and they are fully expressive. Let's get deeper into the binary models. The binary models can be written in a binary function that's H transpose times R times T. And they have different form of the matrix R. R is square matrix related to the relation in binding R. In order to give a unified representation, we even need to split embedding into four parts. And we denote D as a corresponding diagonal matrix of each Ri. So in this way, we can represent this mode complex analog and simple E in these figures. 
you can see that these models differ in their way to form the block square matrix R. And for this mod, it can only model the symmetric relations since the matrix can only be symmetric. For the others, it can model all the other uh, relation patterns like anti-symmetric, earth-symmetric, or inverse. But there is no absolute winner among them since KGs exhibit distinct patterns. Even the fully expressive models do not definitely perform the best. Then KG is fast, thus a relation is important. You can view the different binary models as the different way to recognize the block matrix R. Thus, designing novel and universal scoring functions become harder. Our solution is to adaptively search how to regularize the binary models for different KG tasks and design novel and task aware scoring functions. Then, let's see the definition of AutoSF. Given a set of scoring functions, each step we keep pick up one scoring function and train the embedding into optimal. Then we get the validation performance on validation data set and give feedback for a structure optimizer. In the next step, we tend to pick up a better scoring function. And we iteratively select or search better scoring functions in the space. So G here is the search space. It determines what to be searched. And the structure optimizer is the search algorithm. It determines how to search efficiently how we design our search space and the search algorithm. So basically, the four scoring functions differ in their way to recognize the relation matrix R. And they fill in the RI into different locations and with different signs. So in this way, we set up our search space as a four times four block matrix. And the problem is defined as how to fill in D1 to D4 and the zero matrix along with their signs into each block. So in this way, we can unify the four scoring functions and discover some novel scoring functions. But the size of search space is very large. There are 16 to the power of nine candidates in the search space. Second, the cost of training and evaluating a specific model is expensive. Then, how to capture the important properties like symmetric or asymmetric in the space is difficult. The key point is that not all scoring functions or structures need to be searched. So our idea is to select better scoring functions based on the metric structure to train and evaluate. So basically, we have a, we design a greedy search algorithm to progressively evaluate from few blocks to more blocks. And we design a filter to remove bad and equivalent scoring functions. And also we design a predictor to select promising scoring functions based on the metric structures. The predictor learns the mapping from structure to performance. So all the three components reduce the space dramatically. In this way, we can search the scoring functions efficiently. Then let's see our experiment. In order to measure the effectiveness of the proposed approach, we use mixed prediction in large graph. Given a triplet H, R, and T, we compute the score of all the entities by replacing the head entity and get the rank of the true heads among all the entities and we use some ranking-based metrics to show the performance. The higher, the better. As you can see in this table, the binary models are better than the other types and the rule-based models. And there is no absolute winner among the binary models. And more importantly, compared with the human designed scoring functions, the scoring function searched by AutoSF always need the performance in the five famous KG benchmarks. We also show the distinctiveness of the search scoring functions. You can see that on different data sets, the search scoring functions are different. So scoring functions are KG dependent and they are novel to the literature. 
in order to show the efficiency, we design a general approximator, a multi-layer perception at the third space. This third space is extremely large, so the performance is really bad. And so we compare with random search and basic optimization in the two data sets. Auto SF always better and more efficient than the random search and basing optimization since we have domain specific search algorithm. Then let's come to the summary. We have a challenge in designing new and uh, universal scoring functions for current kgs, and also different kg has distinct properties. To solve this, we contribute by proposing the first AutoML approach for knowledge graph embedding to learn task-aware scoring functions. And we design a well-defined search space and a efficient search algorithm to search in the search space. In this way, we guarantee both effectiveness and efficiency with domain knowledge. In future work, we want to set up the search space beyond the binary models, and we want to enhance the search efficiency by using parameter sharing or early stopping techniques. Thanks for your attention. Our code is publicly available in GitHub, and we have open positions for interns and full-time opportunities for in the uh, machine learning research at Four Paradigm. You can send your CV to the email of Yao Chuanmin. Any questions are welcome. Thank you. Okay. So the Yong Chi that the, we have the two questions from the from the Lin Peng. The first one is the how 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 did you generate the true and false triplet? as example for the auto ML. And the uh, second question is the, how to deal with the imbalance of the truths and the false examples. Any feedback on these two questions? Okay, for yeah, the, 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 to the mic, yes. Okay, can I go? Go ahead, yes. Okay, uh, for, for the knowledge graph embedding training, uh, we have positive tributes from the Data set and the negative tributes is generated by replacing the head entity or replacing the tail entity. To uh, and the negative triplets and those that are not appear in the knowledge graph. So the true and the false are generated based on the knowledge graph. Then we train based on some nodes like a margin based loss or transfer based loss. And for in Actually, in this problem, there does not exist the imbalance problem. And by the way, you can refer to a paper. My, my paper in last, last year I CD, uh, I uh, introduced this uh, uh, efficient and uh, simple uh, negative sampling algorithm in last year I CD. That's all. Okay, yeah, thank you, Yonki. So I'll uh, go to the next uh, presentation. So next presentation is the semantic guided and the response time the bounded top case semantic search over knowledge graph. So it's uh, from the Hangzhou uh, Dianzi University, Southeast University, and uh, the Nanyang Technolog Technological University from Singapore. So the presenter is the uh, Yongxiang Wang. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yu Xiang Wang. I come from uh, Hangzhou Dianzi University, China. The topic of this uh, presentation is about the semantic similarity search over knowledge graphs. Uh, knowledge graph is a, se a se semantic network which models the entities and the relation between entities. And this is an example of the welcome knowledge, knowledge uh, from the DBP theater, uh, and in this knowledge graph, we can find some uh, vehicles that are produced in Germany and uh, some vehicles uh, that are designed by the German designers and other information of the vehicles. And uh, usually, a user want to 
uh, retrieve information from the knowledge graph, and the query, graph query is the one commonly used technology to do this. And uh, one can come up with uh, a query graph to show uh, his um, query intention and use the subgraph matching algorithm to find the matches from the knowledge graph. And actually, uh, different users may construct the different query graphs for the even the same question. Uh, for example, this is a very simple question from the QLD benchmark that we want to find the, all the cars that are produced in Germany. And here are two uh, different query graphs, and uh, the ordinary users may use the query graph uh, by directly using the phrases in the natural languages. And, uh, and uh, well, for a more prof professional user, uh, she may build the query graph by using the uh, by using the terms that uh, from the controlled vocabulary and uh, the, the schemas predefining the knowledge graph. Uh, however, we cannot get all the correct answers by using these two query graphs because uh, there are two uh, types of mismatching. So, first one is the mismatch in query nodes. Um, Consider this uh, example, uh, the query node with the type car cannot map to any entity, entities in the DBPeter because no entities in DBPeter has the same or even the textually similarity, uh, similar um, type for car uh, because car is not a, a, a term that belongs to the vocabulary in the DBPeter. So we cannot get any correct answers. And for this query graph, uh, we can only find the vehicles that are uh, assembled in Germany and ignore all, all the other uh, possible correct answers. And this is because the existing algorithms can do not support the semantically uh, edge to pass mapping. So we cannot map the edge assembly to uh, the ad hoc passes, uh, such as a location manufacturer. So uh, given these two uh, mismatching issues, we define our uh, problem like this. Uh, we take the uh, query, graph, query graph as input, which contains a, a node side, edge side, and a, a, a label function. And we use the label function to assign the name and the types on each entity and assign the predicate on each edge. And we aim to use this uh, query graph to find the top case semantically similar match uh, that have the uh, greatest match scores from the knowledge graph. And uh, the higher uh, match score means the match is more semantically similar to the query graph. And we want to support the semantically node match and uh, the uh, semantically edge to pass match. And uh, here are two uh, matches for this query graph and uh, consider the, the query edge product, we want to find uh, some uh, end hop passes that show the uh, same spectrum meanings uh, as well as the, the uh, nationality. And uh, uh, for this question, uh, problem, we present a uh, decomposition assembly as solution. Um, given a query graph, uh, actually there are many uh, methods can be selected to do the graph of decomposition and we use the method mentioned in this paper. Uh, we break down this query graph into a, a several uh, sub query graphs uh, by selecting a, a pivot node and all the sub query graphs will intersect at this pivot node. And for each uh, sub query graph, we present a semantic guided search to find the, the matches and each one has a, a, a semantic similarity. And after then, uh, we need to assemble them together to form the final match. And each one has a, a match score. And uh, in this paper, we define the match score, match score as the sum of the semantic similarity of all the sub graph matches. And in this paper, we focus on this part, the semantic guided search and the assembly. And uh, for the node match, uh, we define in one to many relation from the query node side to the node side of the knowledge graph through uh, the uh, synonym uh, abbreviation transformation. Uh, basically, um, in, in the internet, there are many online dictionaries like uh, Bubble Knight, which is the largest uh, encyclopedic dictionary, and uh, also other uh, domain specific uh, dictionaries. And we use we need to use these online dictionaries to build the transformation library for all the existing types and the names in the knowledge graph. So given this uh, query graph, we can know the query node with the type car actually means uh, the automobiles in the knowledge graph and the GER is actually means the Germany in the knowledge graph. So uh, by using this library, we can support the um, synonym abbreviation besides the exact node match.
And for the edge match, uh, we support the semantically edge-to-best mapping uh, based on the past semantic similarity, PSS. Uh, for example, given this square graph, uh, there are many different passes in the knowledge graph that from the, the Germany to automobile, and uh, only part of them show the semantically similar uh, meanings to the uh, query graph, uh, like the, the last three passes. So the question is how how to identify these uh, semantically similar passes from others uh, effectively. And in this paper, we uh, leverage the uh, knowledge graph embedding, embedding model to get the semantic space of, the, of all the predicates. And uh, then we can compute the predicate similarity by using the cosine similarity or, or other metrics. Then we can model the passes from the Germany to autumn valves uh, as a, a weighted pass, and each edge has a, a predicate similarity to the a given query edge. And we use this uh, uh, similarity as the weight. Uh, intuitively, uh, if a pass that has more edges that are uh, semantically similar to the query graph, then we can see the entire pass is more semantically similar to the uh, query graph. So, we define the pass uh, semantic similarity as the uh, geometric mean of all weights appearing at a pass. And now the problem is how to uh, find the, the pass that uh, has the greatest PSS efficiently. Yeah, so to solve this problem, uh, we sm presented a, a semantic guided search based on the uh, heuristic PSS estimation. And uh, this is the example of this uh, search algorithm. We start the search from Germany, and we need to uh, compute the uh, estimated PSS for each uh, uh, exploit node. And we need to select the one with the greatest uh, estimated PSS to expand the search space. And uh, we need to uh, continue to update the um, estimated PSS for the uh, new exploit nodes. And uh, in this example, after the second iteration, we can return the top two matches because the estimated PSS of other uh, nodes are are smaller than the than the uh, PSS of the top two matches. So we can simply prune the uh, the, the other passes and return the top two matches. So uh, the PSS estimation is a key of the semantic guided search. In this paper, we need to estimate the PSS of the, the pass from the uh, specific node US and the target node US at each exploit node UI. And we want to ensure that the uh, estimated PSS is larger than the exact one so that we can approve the on-promising passes safely. So we, we can estimate the PSS by this equation which contains two parts. The first part is the product of the weights appearing at the export pass and the second par part is the maximum weight of the agency edges of the UI, which is used for the on exploit pass. And by uh, using this equation, we can get the outbound of the exact PSS. And we also can prove that by using this PSS uh, estimation value, we can guarantee that our semantic guided search can find the match with the greatest PSS. And after we get some matches for, for the sub graphs, we can we need to assemble them together to get the, the final match. And uh, actually, this is a draw operation, and we want to get the top K matches without scanning the whole match set. So we uh, uh, use the threshold algorithm-based assembly method that we, we do a sequential scan from the top to pardon and uh, combine each possible match together and uh, to uh, computer its uh, match score. Uh, and in this example, after scan the first row, so we can get the top two matches and we, we select the smallest match score as the lower bound of the top two match score as L. And for other potential matches, we update their up, uh, up bound of the match score and select the greatest one as the up bound of the other match score as U. And uh, we can see the top two matches are found when L is larger than or equals to U because we cannot uh, find a match that has a greater uh, match score than the top two matches.
And moreover, we, we also optimize the semantic guided search uh, to return the top K matches with, within the user specific time bound T. The motivation is that all the existing algorithms cannot return any uh, results until the graph query uh, terminates, uh, and this is not good for the user experience. So we want to uh, return the approximate result uh, with a very small user specific time bound, and uh, we can refine it as more time is given. So this is the basic idea of our uh, response time bounded search, and we um, for the sub query graph querying we use a multi thread manner and. Uh, oh, Oh, we have a time estimation model to collect the information from all the threads, threads uh, including the, the time already used and the, the size of the match set. And we can use this information to estimate the execution time and if the time reached to uh, alert level, then we can uh, stop it and uh, do the assembly. Otherwise, we need to uh, keep on running and uh, refine the approximate results. And we show the experimental result on three uh, real-world uh, data sites and uh, three uh, query workloads, as well as a, a synthetic graphs. And we use these synthetic graphs to evaluate the effect of the query graph shapes and the sizes on our algorithms. And uh, we use uh, precision, recall, and F1 as uh, accuracy metrics. Uh, this is uh, effectiveness and the efficiency result on DBP data this side. And we can see that the blue bar is our uh, semantic guided search and it's always uh, better than other uh, baselines. Uh, for example, uh, we, we can improve 31% uh, on average of all uh, precision compared with uh, S4. This is because our method can support the uh, semantically edge to pass mapping so that we can find more semantically similar answers. And uh, our method is uh, three times faster than S4. This is because we can effectively prune the unpromising passes both based on the PSS estimation. And this is the impact of the response time bound. From the left figure, we can see that more accurate uh, answers can be returned as more time is given. And in the right figure, uh, we show the actual response time for each uh, given uh, time bound. Uh, we can see that the uh, our method can return the answers within a small, uh, very small variation of the uh, provided time bound on average. And this is the analysis of the query graph shapes and the sizes. And uh, we generate uh, different query graphs with uh, five common shapes uh, in different sizes. And we can see that the tree and the flower shape the uh, query graphs are more time consuming than others. This is because they have more sub, uh, sub query graphs. And moreover, uh, the, the larger uh, Query graphs always take more time than the smaller ones for all shapes. This is because the larger uh, query graph uh, means there are more edges, and uh, which means we need to check more uh, past candidates. And this is the uh, scalability with the uh, not graph side. Uh, we extracted the two uh, subgraphs from the original uh, DBP data site, and we show the, the performance of the online search part and the offline embedding part. And we can see that the search time increases as the graph size uh, increases, but the change is not uh, significant. Uh, so we can say the our method is scalable to the, the to the graph size, and. Uh, uh, moreover, the offline knowledge graph embedding time and uh, memory usage are modest, modest uh, for example, within seven hours and uh, nine gigabytes. Uh, that's all, thank you. Okay, thanks, Professor Wang. A any question from the audience? I didn't see any question posted on the uh, on the message. So, so I have one question. So you have a multiple dictionary. So how can you deal with the semantic inconsistent between multiple dictionary? So for example, a name maybe have a multiple meaning in semantically. Uh, yes, uh, uh, that could be some uh, inconsistency uh, of the different uh, knowledge graphs, uh, dictionaries. So uh, because um, 
I just used one uh, encyclopedia dictionary and others are domain specific. specific. So uh, actually uh, the inconsistent cases are, are not uh, very common. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if it uh, exists, so I uh, just using a vote, voting strategy, like uh, uh, some uh, like uh, uh, the more uh, dictionaries uh, are, are using the, this uh, terms. I, I will select it. Okay, so you don't use, so that for example, like the multiple location may have the multiple orders to belong to different countries, but then you just uh, not using the context to this to this thing to uh, clarify the each the concept, right? So you just yeah. use voting from the dictionary. Yeah, 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 that's right. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, so we go to the uh, next uh, next presentation. So next presentation is the PPKWS, an efficient framework for keyword search on public-private networks. So from the Hong Kong Baptist University and uh, also from the Lanyang Technolo uh, Technological University. So we are presented by the uh, uh, Jiaxin Jiang. Hello everyone. I'm happy to present our recent work, PPKWS. PPKWS is an efficient framework for keyword search on public-private networks. This is a joint work with Huang Xin, Bai Ren, Jian Liang, Saraf, and Xu Lü. Today, I'm going to present our work as follows. Firstly, I will introduce the background, challenges, and the problem. Then, I will present some keyword search semantics and our framework to support these keyword search algorithms on public-private graphs. Also, I will introduce the index we propose and show the efficiency of our framework by experiments. Now, let's start with some background. As we know, the graph data is large in size. For example, Yago contains 10 million vertex and 183 million edges, and DBPDL contains 5 million vertex and 61 million edges. Also, it lacks rigid structure and lacks useful schema information for users to formulate queries and query processors for optimization. Since the keyword search requires little background about the graph, it becomes very popular. Now there is an emerging graph model called the public-private graph model. Some graph data are visible to the all user, uh, which are public graph. However, users may have uh, private graphs such as private knowledge bases or social networks. And in a recent report, 52.6% uh, of 1.4 million New York City Facebook users had their friends list. The query is executed for a specific user on the combined graph, which is visible to him. Next, I would like to introduce some challenges. First one, the query uh, result on private graph can be different from the answer on the combined graph. For example, here is a public collaboration uh, network G and four private uh, graphs. A node is an academic with its label represent, representing keywords of his research interests, and an edge is a collaboration in research paper. In this example, G and G4 prime are visible to Bob. When Bob proposed a new project, DBAI and CV, he first seek out his close collaboration from his prime uh, network G4 prime. However, the query DBAI and CV on Bob's network returns no answer. The answer uh, from the public graph G alone is a substituted at B, uh, whose lead vertex are D and C, but they are not close to each other. From the combined graph G of G4 prime and G, Bob obtains a substituted at B, uh, whose lead vertex are A and C, uh, which is a closer collaboration. The second challenge is that the semantics and indexing techniques vary by different keyword search semantics. For example, billions return a subtree, and Archaic returns a compact subgraph, and Kente returns the k nearest vertex of a given query vertex. The last challenge is that all of them contain uh, numerous short distance computation. The index are hard to apply on public-private uh, graph model, since it is, it is costly to construct and maintain index for the combined graph for each user. Uh, here are some related words. First category is keyword search semantics, as we introduced in previous slides. The second category is public-private graph analysis. Some traditional algorithms such as single source shortest path, reachability tree, etc., have been 
redesigned on the public private graph model. However, the keyword search on such model hasn't been studied yet. The third category is indexing for short distance queries. In our framework, we also design index in our framework to reduce the time of short distance computation. Uh, here are our contribution. We propose a public private keyword search framework called PPKWS. We show that some keyword search algorithms uh, can be implemented on top of PPKWS with small modifications. We propose efficient index on the public graph, case and case to reduce the time of short distance computations. PPKWS improves the query performance of some keyword search semantics uh, on public private answers, uh, such as billions, acrylic, and KNK, uh, on average by one to two magnitudes. Before we move on, let me introduce our problem first. Given a public graph G, a private graph G prime, a keyword query Q of a keyword search algorithms F, we investigate a generic framework to determine the answer A of Q on a combined graph. We focus on the uh, technical interesting case of keyword search on public private graph, where the answer span across the public and private graphs. Now I would like to introduce three popular keyword search semantics. The first one is acrylic. Given a set of query keywords, uh, each answer contains a set of vertex, such that each vertex contains a query keyword, and the distance of each pair of vertex are no larger than a given straight shot. For example, given a query keyword A, B, and C, the answer on G and G3 prime is V7, V6, and V17. Uh, v17, uh, V7 contains the query keyword A, V6 contains the query keyword B, and V17 uh, contains the query keyword C. The distance between each two of them is no larger than three. The second one is billings. Given a set of query keywords, it returns a subtree such that uh, each leaf vertex contains a query keyword, and the distance between the root and the leaf vertex is no larger than a threshold. For example, given a query A, B, and C, the answer on G and G4 prime is a subtree rooted at V1. The three leaf vertex are V2, V3, and V4. The last one I would like to introduce is canyonless keyword search. The input is a keyword and a uh, given vertex, you will output canyonless vertex of the query vertex. All of these vertex contains the query keyword. For example, given a query vertex V8, a query keyword A, and top K is 3, the result on a G1 prime and G are V0, V5, and V9. In our paper, we propose a generic framework uh, called PPKWS. A keyword search algorithm F can be implemented implemented on the public-private graph model with minor modifications of following three key steps. The first step is partial evaluation. It takes the private graph, the query, and the query algorithm as input. Partial evaluation returns a set of partial answers and a set of refinement indicators, such that each indicator C contains a set of pairs whose distance need to be further refined. The second step is answer refinement. It refines the distance between each pair in the refinement indicator for each partial answer. The last step is answer completion. It completes the uh, each refined answer by retrieving the missing keywords on the public graph. We take the uh, subtree keyword search semantics as an example. Here is a partial public graph and a private graph. Suppose the query keyword is A, B, and C. There will be there will be some uh, partial answer generated by applying uh, billings on the private graph. We list two of them looted at P1 and P2 as an example. We take a look at the uh, second answer, P, uh, A2. The short distance between the root P2 and the keyword A is infinity. The answer refinement finds that there is a shorter pass uh, on the public graph where the V1 can retrieve the query keyword A. The last step is answer completion. In this example, it takes twice backward expansion uh, from P2 and P1. P1. Well, uh, where it expands, when it expands from P2, there will be two more partial answers looted at V1 and V13 generated. In this expansion, V1 and V13 are the first time visited. When expanding from P1, the answer looted at V1 and V13 will be further completed since keyword A is retrieved. We can see that some query keywords are still missed by some partial answers. We can further retrieve from a public graph. For example, the answer root uh, 
Answer looting at v13 can find uh, v0 and v4 are closer to uh, v13 on public graph. Then each answer will be verified uh, if it is satisfy the public private uh, answer definition. Also, uh, Arclay and KNK can be implemented on top of uh, PPKWS similarly. We can see that the keyword search involves numerous short distance computation. For example, finding the answer of Arclay on the combined graph of G and G3 prime, it takes 12 times short distance computation on G prime and a short distance computation on the combined graph GC. Here are our solution. We propose pairs and k-pairs to estimate the short distance between the vertex and the keyword with theoretical bound. And we index the distance between portal nodes to compute the distance of the path spanning uh, on the public graph and private graph. S is a popular uh, in a uh, distance indexing technique. Given a graph, each vertex V is associated with a sketch, which is a set of vertex and their corresponding uh, short distance from V. The short distance between U and V uh, can be estimated uh, by the intersection of S, U, and S, V. However, uh, S does not consider the relative importance of the vertex when generating the sketch. Therefore, we propose a page rank based all distance sketch. We first compute a page rank value for each vertex to indicate the importance. For example, V13 covers 41 out of 156 shortest paths in the graph. G in total, which is the largest among all the vertices. To build pairs, we compute a dash chart ring for each vertex first. We take V1 as an example. Uh, his dash chart ranking list are uh, here. Uh, pairs contain a uh, vertex U if it is a uh, pattern value is the case largest among the vertices, which has the smaller dash chart ring. We take V1 as an example. Uh, to show how to build a path, we suppose k is 1. This is the order by dash chart ring. Uh, v1 is the largest, so it will be 80 into the sketch uh, path vi. Next, vertex P, uh, p1 won't be 80 into path since its value is not, not the largest one between the v1 and p1. Similarly, p2 uh, won't be 80 into the path v1. Uh, v13 is the largest one among the v1, p1, p2, and v13. So it will be added into the path. Here is a completed path label for the public graph. Our results show that paths can reduce the error as well as the size of index. We will show this in the following slides. For the k-path, we merge the gauge of the vertex, which carry the same keyword as we show in this table. Based on paths and k-paths, the short distance between the vertex and keywords on public graph can be estimated by the intersection of the sketch of a given vertex and keyword. We also give the bound and proof. The details are provided in our paper. For computing the distance of the path spanning on the com uh, combined graph, we also plot, plot several index. The first one is portal distance. The distance of the portal nodes in private graph and public graph are different. We use the, different, uh, we use the distance on uh, public graph to refine that on private graph. Here is the algorithm. We maintain the priority queue to maintain the changes of the portal distance. Uh, and we remove the tuple from the head of the queue and refine the portal distance of the adjacent portal nodes. This procedure will terminate when queue is empty. Furthermore, we maintain the distance between the portal nodes and keyword in a map. Also, we pre-compute the distance between each vertex in private graph and the portal node. Then the shorty distance refinement can be computed by the portal distance and the two table. Here are the complexities of the three keyword search algorithms on PVKWS. The complexity of partial variation is the same as previous algorithms, and the refinement and completion are close to lock time. Next, I will present our experiment. We conduct two large graphs and one social graph. For the large graph, the entity and the corresponding phase in specific domains, uh, such as chemistry and movie, form the private graph. The rest of the entities and facts form the public graph. For DBLP, we set a current time as 2013. Uh, existing collaboration made the public graph, while ongoing collaborations form the private graph. Regarding the baseline algorithm, we extend the buildings and archaic uh, with a simple qualification function to verify if an answer is very public private answer and apply them on the combined graph GC. Regarding the query, we generated 50 uh, random synthetic keyword query for the experiment for each algorithm. 
we can see from the figure, the index size of pets is 28% smaller than eggs. For the approximation ratio, the distance estimated by pets is very accurate compared with eggs, as we show in the figures below. The error of pets is 99.99% uh, smaller than that of eggs on Yago. Next, I would like to present some experiments of PPKWS. First one is PPRClick. PPRClick is 12 times faster on average to retrieve the public private answer. Most of the time is spending on the answer refinement. The second one is PPB links. PPKWS runs uh, in 202 times faster on average. Most of the time is uh, of the query time is spending on the answer completion. The more vertex in the public graph are traversed, the more time answer completion it will take. Last one is PPKNK. Uh, PPKWS runs 120 times faster on average. PPKWS spends more than 85% uh, of the query time on partial evaluation. Here are our conclusions. Popular keyword search algorithms can be implemented on PPKWS with minor modification. Uh, PPKWS uh, can reduce the runtime of the keyword search on public private graphs. The proposed index pairs and k-pairs offer both a theoretical guarantee in short distance estimation and high accuracy in practice. In our future work, we plan to investigate PPKWS for other query semantics. Or also, we would like to expand, extend the PPKWS to support uh, keyword search on dynamic graph and plugging existing index into PPKWS to further improve the performance. Here are the reference. Uh, and thanks for your listening. Okay, thank the, the, the Jiaxin. So I had uh, one question from the Tao Tao. So that the, as, as Kinabao, that the, is it possible to use and the uh, link prediction technique to find out the, the public private uh, network graph? Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, the public and private graphs are given, uh, as I introduced in the presentation, uh, for DBLP, uh, we have some uh, semantics to define the public graph and uh, define the private graph. Uh, for example, uh, we set the current time as uh, 2013, then the existing collaborations, uh, we, we call it it is a public co uh, collaborations. So these uh, collaborations can form a public graph. Uh, however, uh, the ongoing uh, uh, ongoing the collaborations uh, starting from the 2013, then these uh, collaborations will form the private graph uh, for each the uh, each the researchers of uh, because the research paper haven't been uh, published. So this uh, we call this a uh, private graph. Uh, for the knowledge graph. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, we we define uh, 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 some knowledge uh, belongs to a specific domain. For example, the uh, uh, chemical uh, chemical terms will be uh, kept private uh, for some lab. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, the some uh, compound or the uh, molecule etc. Uh, will be kept uh, private for the uh, uh, chem uh, chemistry uh, researchers. So. Uh, uh, we in, in in this paper we assume the public and private graph are given. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Any other question from the audience? From the attendees? Okay. Very good. So I think the we are on schedule. So thank all the the authors, speaker, and the attendee for attend this session. So I think that especially for those who are in the midnight, I think that it's uh, difficult to understand as the right now is mid midnight time in, in China, Singapore or, or the Australia. Okay, yeah, thanks. So this is the conclude our session. Thank you.